break 20 years of presenting Homes Under the Hammer. But last month, Martin Roberts was left fearing he would die after an emergency dash to hospital. Yeah, you'd be dead. Yeah. He would be dead. Uh, Martin and his wife, Kirsty, join us now. Um, there are a number of, you know, sort of lucky breaks here, which we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll talk about as we go through. Um, what were the first signs of, of what it was? When did you start to feel ill? Um, I'd been feeling a bit poorly under the weather for a couple of weeks uh, and I've had a few chest infections over the last few years and I've had asthma since childhood, so I'm kind of used to a, a sort of a, a quite a tight chest, but uh, as it approached the Easter Bank holiday weekend, it was starting to get really bad where I could hardly walk without really struggling for breath, breath basically. Mm. And, and the, the confusing thing about this, I think, is a bit of a red herring, is that it, it gets you in, in the breathing side of things, so you don't think it's something to do with your heart. Right. It's like you, you think, oh, it must be something to do with my, my chest. And, you know, then it's the dangerous thing of playing Google Doctor. You know, you go on, you, you, know, you think, and it looked like it could have been the symptoms for long COVID. Yeah. Real sort of lethargy, a tightness in the chest, this pain in the chest, difficulty breathing. Um, and so you just kind of pause it and pause it. And by the time it got to, uh, you know, just after the bank holiday weekend, I said to Kirsty, I was starting to be delirious. Mm. I, I was sort of putting letters the wrong way around. I said, we've got to go to hospital. So worrying for you. Oh. Yeah, really, yeah. Really worrying. And, um, you know, just we just thankful that we got you in when we did. And actually, from the moment we walked into the A&E department to being seen, it was, it was minutes, wasn't it? It was yeah. just really? so quick. And, I mean, I and you're in their hands then, yeah. you know, so actually as a bystander, you kind of... You I, th I think a lot of people it. are sort of put off going to A&E at the moment. They still think, oh, I'm going to just, you know, I'm going to take the pressure off the NHS and whatever. And I know that the attitude of the NHS would be, get there. You know, because we need to sort you out. Mm -hmm. And in this instance, it really was minutes made all the difference. Yeah. I mean, because what was happening was basically uh, there's this sack around your heart and it was filling with fluid. It's called a pericardial effusion and that in turn is something called a tapenade, which basically means this, this sack is, is basically squeezing the heart that it sits around. So the heart isn't able to expand and therefore isn't able to pump. Right. So that means that all your other organs start failing. So by the time they got to me, my, my kidneys were at 30%, my liver was at 30%, my lungs... Uh, that was what was happening with my lungs. It wasn't that my lungs weren't working, it was the fact that the heart wasn't able to pump the blood. Knock on so it wasn't getting the oxygen. Mm. And at any point, I could have had a heart attack because the heart goes, oh, forget this, I've had enough. And it's not a heart attack that you can do the sort of, you know, yeah. clear uh, because the heart's being strangled by itself. So, so, so you go into hospital, you find out that you have fluid around your heart and so they perform a procedure to drain that fluid, yeah. which you are awake like it was. <laughs> throughout. So, I mean, the whole thing becomes surreal and you've got to say the NHS... And our A&E department, and there are our UAs, the Royal United Hospital and Bath, did an amazing job. And, you know, the cardiac care unit especially, and, and I'm sure it's the same throughout the country. You know, once you're in that system, there's nothing better. It's bang, bang, bang. Yeah. Everyone's really calm. They did various echo scans, and then, yes, they decided that, they, that, that the right things, the right people were there. It needed to be done quickly. I'm wheeled uh, you know, on the A&E trolley, but I noticed that there's a doctor behind, not a porter, and he had, like, an emergency pack on his back. That is how much they thought that at any point I could have had heart So they are all brilliant. They rush you in. They act, so... you know, quicker than lightning. <laughs> yeah. But what goes through your mind? Well, I mean, you just put yourself in the hands of the professionals. And as you say, I'm lying there in, in, in the, the specialist uh, cardiac and drain unit. There's a special operating theatre. And it's a, it's a local anaesthetic. So I'm watching. And he said, don't watch this bit, as they stick a tube, basically, into this sack in your heart. And then he turns it with a big syringe and starts pulling this dark red black liquid, which I call, you know, almost like which is, you know, death liquid. He mm -hmm. syringes and sort of pulls it out and squirts it into a plastic beaker and then pulls out another one and squirts it into a plastic beaker. <laughs> and I was just watching as this stuff, which was literally strangling me to death. Could, did you which feel better the minute it started yeah. taking it off? You started yeah. to feel it. Yeah, feel yeah. yeah. you could feel it straight away. And, and actually, like... when he came back, when he then came back to the ward, his his whole face, immediately I said, you look better, because his whole face looked like it had colour back into it, no so it was way. that quick. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is that... And we were just talking about the tick list of luck that you had, <laughs> because, you know, we have incredible care here, mm -hmm. you were with the right mm -hmm. people who knew what to do, you were with someone who spotted what it was, all of those things. Mm. You, We all read in the papers, we're watching you in the news in Ukraine. 
So you you mm. take a van out to Ukraine. You're deliber uh, delivering, uh, ironically, uh, defibrillators, yeah. heart equipment. Yeah, it was. <laughs> if it had happened there, the roadside in Poland, mm. I'd be dead. You oh. were done for. That, 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 that. Isn't worth thinking about. No. Mm. I mean, we're talking. We're talking minutes, stroke hours of of life left here. So, A, you need a, a great team to spot it, but B, you need some fairly specialist, you know, equipment and skills to sort it out. You can't just stick a buyer in the chest and go, there you go. I mean, it is... So, the reality is, if it had happened, I wouldn't be here for it. Well, you see, the thing is that people wouldn't have known the side of the road in Poland, no. you know, that people wouldn't uh, have known what it was. No, no. Of course. They'd, have, they'd have tried breathe, to yeah, do they'd CPR. Try, yeah. Heart, yeah. CPR. And also, you just, you know, breathing difficulties, as I said. Yeah. It's, it's a real... And that's what I want to get home to people at home. You know, you think it's a breathing problem. It's not. Invariably, you know... Or not invariably, but it's in certain cases, certainly in my case, you know, it, that was just a symptom of the heart not working. Mm. So, as usual, the, the advice is if you've got chest pains, if you've got difficulty breathing, no matter, no matter what sort of attitude you have, of, I don't want to pressurise people, they would much rather you see you mm. and, and, and sort you out or say it's yeah. OK, it's nothing desperate, because you've got to get yourself You're so right. We've sort of flipped into that mindset, haven't we, of thinking, like you say, trouble breathing. You instantly think COVID yeah, 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 because yeah. of the world that uh, we've well, a lot, a lot, Yeah, we had. We go, again, COVID. Google Doctor Bad thing, you know, checked it out, what the symptoms, and they were very similar to long COVID. Mm. It's, you know... A difficulty breathing, um, you know, a bit of a cough, um, you know, uh, uh, slight heart palpitations. They were, they were all almost a tickless. I went through a tickless. Well, you, we did. I, I mean, tick, you know, tick, oh, and, and a, a few weeks back, we, you know, you were sim I you thought, were displaying thought, symptoms very like similar symptoms to COVID, that, and yeah. even though we was tested and it was but negative, that is, but we were like, oh, yeah, maybe there'd be a mistake. That's a classic case of not just you know, letting, letting the professionals do the, do yeah, the diagnosis, job, not yeah. yes. Dr Google. Is this, Kirsty, a reset? For you and the family, because he work, he never says no to work. I mean, he keeps working, <laughs> oh, keeps my goodness. doing stuff. So it, has it been a reset? Totally. I You're mean, not allowed we've, to we've, <laughs> we've 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 said this, haven't we? I, d I did send a, car, a card to Martin when we when he came out of hospital, and I said we do have to take this as a bit of a watershed moment. And I said in that you're just going to have to learn to say no because we all we both do, I and mean, we always have. We've lived life at 100 miles an hour, mm. and very rarely stop um, and smell the roses, as Martin would say. And, you know, I think times like this, you do just start to realise what's important in life. And, yeah, there's going to have to be a little bit of a readjustment, even now. I mean, even in this sort of recovery stage, Martin is already starting to feel a little bit frustrated that he can't just go back to doing everything that he That's was so doing. And yeah. I've said, you know, actually, the doctors have said this could be months for you mm -hmm. to just get back to that place and it's going to be a slow process. How does that affect um, Homes Under the Hammer? So, uh... Well, no, I mean, the team are being really great. I mean, I think taking it easy, I will, I will start filming again, you know, in the next few weeks. Uh, I've got to get to 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, uh, hopefully I'll get some nicer properties and they'll, they'll, they'll cherry pick the good ones rather than the, uh, the really bad ones. So once you've done, I, I once you've get, done 20, I'm, are you looking at 21? Or are you... uh, yeah, I'm not planning to... OK, so, you, so the, trimming things down but yeah. not the core. Yes. yes, exactly. And it was yeah. so, so recently. So make sure you... You know, Easter just feels like a, a, a blink <laughs> away. So make sure you are looking. How are you doing now? How are you feeling so, today? So, uh, well, I went yesterday and had a, a bit of a, a check-up. Things are moving in the right direction. OK. But everyone just sort of says... This was this was this was serious. Yeah. I mean, I did ask the cardiac team, who were like, bear in mind, they're the like ultra. Like, this is emergency team. I said, how serious is this? They said, well, it's about an eight out of ten. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> but not presumably ten is death. And looking <laughs> pretty quickly t t towards nine. Yes. I mean, yes. Yes. Right. Progressing yeah. in that way. So look yeah. after yourself. Thank you. Yes. Take, take care. It easy. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for pointing out the things to look out yes. for. Yes. Uh, do go and see the specialists yeah. for sure, because you, you never know what it is. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs>